Mortal Kombat 11 is the next installment in the Mortal Kombat saga. It continues the story from the rebooted timeline and it delivers on multiple timeline ideas. Mortal Kombat 11 was released on April 23rd, 2019 with natural positive reviews. The game has given us more than we dreamed of when the game was released and also has given us a full list of regular and expanded characters. Also, two full stories and by the end will change the Mortal Kombat universe forever. Now I am going to get into the whole MLK 11 story along with the Aftermath story. But don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more content. But right now, let's get into the video. The game starts off with a last from left off. We join Raiden as more of an anti-hero now, aka Dark Raiden. He is torturing Shinnok, the villain from the last game, and he then beheads him, but is still alive. Raiden leaves him and then a female's voice calls out Shinnok and is revealed to be the new main villain, Kronika. We cut to the special forces and Cassie Cage gets a promotion by defeating her mother, Sonya Blade, in a fight. Raiden then comes and wants to invade the Nether Realm and take out Liu Kang and Katana's army because they were both killed and made into revenants by Kwan. Quan Chi from the two previous games, but Quan Chi is dead, but they still remain revenants. They head to the Outworld while weakened. Raiden manages to hold his own against Liu Kang's army. The rest of the special forces make it into Liu Kang's palace to manage to blow it up, but not before Sonya gives her her life so the others could escape. Cassie, Johnny, and Jackie mourn, but Raiden is not as sympathetic, saying that her sacrifice was necessary. Meanwhile, Kotoko shows up to the Nether Realm and teams up with Liu Kang and Katana. In Outworld, Kotoko is executing one of Shao Kahn's followers, but it was interrupted by a time storm caused by Kronika. It brings back the past versions of Shao Kahn, Scarlet, Baraka, Scorpion, Cabal, Sonya Blade, Johnny Cage, Kano, Aaron Black, Jade, Raiden, which erased the present Raiden, Katana, Liu Kang, and Kum Lao. Some of the villains were recruited by Kronika side by Devor. Raiden and the other Earthrealm forces join special forces after forming an alliance with Koto. They all agree to divide and conquer to help stop Kronika. Past Liu Kang and Kun Lao travel to Wushu Academy to stop an invasion of the Netherrealm. They both contemplate on their fates. While Kun Lao is skeptical, Liu Kang remains loyal to Raiden. The two encounter Scorpion from their time and future Jade and fight them. They were defeated and they encounter Gears, Kronika's second in command. He is taking Earth's life force called the Jinsei. The two Shaolin monks fight their future selves and defeat them. Gears stops time and Kronika appears. Gears wants to kill them, but Kronika says he, she has plans for them, and they escape. Back at Special Forces, Raiden promises that he will not repeat the same mistakes as his future counterpart did. He will find a better solution to defeat Kronika. Sub-Zero meets Hanzo Asashi, the future Scorpion counterpart at the reactivated Cyberlink Quay Factory. Sektor from the past has made new cybernetic warriors in his short time since the time merge. They were seen countless bodies on the ground, and they vowed to avenge their fellow warriors. They both encountered Cyrax, and to their surprise, Frost has joined Kronika due to her hatred of her former mentor for making amends with Hanzo. Cyrax then activate the Cybernetic Warriors, but then Cyrax is defeated, then new Cyrax shows up and fights the two. Cyrax is reactivated and switches sides and does what's necessary to cripple Kronika's cause. Sektor tries to intervene but is destroyed. Cyrax manages to sever the connection of the cybernetic warriors and wish to be shut down as well so that one way, when the time goes back to normal, he wouldn't want to be a cyborg. Meanwhile, at Kronika's lair, Kano shows up and joins his younger self and Kronika. Back in Outworld, Raiden renders aid to Kotokan to stop Shao Kahn once and for all. Jade and Kotal manage to infiltrate Shao Kahn's forces at the Tarkartan camp. Koto wants to execute them, but Jay insists otherwise. The two fight and she wins, but they are then captured. Raiden tries to talk to the other gods once again. Only Cetrion and Kronika's daughter is left standing. She tells Raiden that Kronika wants to restart the timeline in her image and balance will be destroyed as long as the realms keep fighting and raging war against each other. Back at Special Forces base, the past versions of Jack, Sonya, and Johnny all get to know their children and what becomes of their older selves until they are attacked by Kano and the Black Dragon Army. The two Johnny Cages hold off the henchmen and pass Aaron Black until the older Johnny Cage finds Cassie injured. He learns that past Sonya has been kidnapped and goes to try to save her. Despite his efforts, he is shot in the knee by Kano and then captures the young Johnny Cage. As the Black Dragon forces escape, Cassie manages to split a tracking device on their ship. Kano then leaves Sektor, who was brought back online from the previous fight, and straps a nuclear bomb to him, and just before it exploded, Raiden saves them and transports them to the Fire Gardens, home of Hanzo Asashi, which he welcomes them with open arms due to be the only safe place left on Earthland. 
Word gets out that Shao Kahn has captured Kodo and Jade. The two Shaolin monks want to go back to Outworld and help Katana. Raiden accepts and sends it to. Katana enlists Shiva's help with Liu Kang and Kung Lao. They all confront Shao Kahn and he is defeated and now Katana is now the Khan of Outworld with Kodo's blessing. Back at the Fighter Gardens, Cassie learns that if either of her younger parents die, she will cease to exist. So she goes to rescue them. At the fight club where Kana is holding young Johnny Cage and Sonya, they were forced to fight each other to buy some time until they come up with a plan to escape. Cassie then shows up, they all fight and they make their way out until older Kano injures Cassie. Sonya goes after both Kanos and she had younger Kano on the ropes until present Kano tries to force her to let his younger self go by having younger Johnny as a hostage saying that if he dies, Cassie dies. Younger Sonya sarcastically thinks older Kano and then shoots younger Kano in the eye, killing him, which instantly killing present Kano as well. Gears then shows up and tries to take revenge on Cassie for defeating Shinnok, but Sonya defeats him as well. But then he regenerates and they retreat. Kronika allies are worried on how this battle is going, but Kronika rests assured that everything is going according to plan. Past Jax and Jack makes it to Shang Tsung's island to retrieve Kronika's crown. This will turn the tide of the conflict. They were first ambushed by Revenant Jade and Yugger Cabal. They both make quick work of them. The two make it to the Well of Souls and Jax recalls his time being a prisoner during the first tournament. They then fight Noob Saibot who reveals that he was the original Sub-Zero that was killed by Scorpion. They then defeat him and his Shadow clones and obtain the crown. They are then confronted by President Jax that has sided with Kronika. His past self gets into his ass spot joining evil, but President Jax's reasons for doing this is to keep Jackie safe and rid of the burden of her being a soldier. The two Jax fight and the younger Jax wins, but is short-lived for Cetrion comes and puts Jackie into a pit, hanging for her life. President Jax begs his past self to surrender the crown to save their daughter. Past Jax agrees and hands the crown over. Jackie is saved but is disappointed how her father side with the enemy. Cetrion and President Jax return with the crown and Krona then dons it. Hanzo is at the Sea of Blood and he sees Cetrion and her army of cyborgs and demons. He came to the assistance of Chiron so that way they can get into Kronika's hourglass. He then saves Chiron from Devor, which was torturing him for not helping Kronika's cause. He is then ambushed by his past self, Scorpion. Hanzo wins the conflict with his past self, learning the reason on why he sided with Kronika is to bring back his wife and son. He then tells Kronika that she will bring back Shinnok. Hanzo is then fatally stabbed by Devor. With his dying breath to his past self, he shows Scorpion that his words are true and he switched sides by attacking Devor, forcing her to retreat. Hanzo tells Scorpion to meet with Raiden at the Fire Gardens and then dies. Scorpion goes to the Fire Gardens and is attacked by Sub-Zero and Raiden. He defeats them both trying to convince him that they are on the same side, but Raiden wasn't having it. Raiden wants to kill him, but Liu Kang intervenes and tells Raiden that Scorpion may be telling the truth. Raiden doesn't want to hear it and Liu Kang came to the conclusion that Raiden cannot be trusted. Raiden doesn't give a damn about trust. He just wants you to do what he says, not as he does. The two fight, but Raiden realizes that he and Liu Kang had done this before. There were numerous times in multiple timelines. He then sees that Shinnok's amulet was corrupting him. He then destroys it. He also states that this is all Kronika is doing, that this will happen again. She has restarted the timeline numerous times, putting Liu Kang and Raiden against each other. And Liu Kang always dying. Raiden concludes that of this day forward, Kronika is no longer in charge of them or controlling. However, Kronika shows up and kidnaps Liu Kang. At her lair, present Liu Kang steals his past self soul and prior him indefinitely. Raiden and his allies make it to the Sea of Blood to commence the final battle with Kronika's forces. Raiden then fights and convinces present Jax to come back to their side. Raiden then fights Gears and throws him to the Sea of Blood that is a bottle of pit and that he will sink forever. Raiden then severs Frost's links to the Cyberlane Quay and shuts them down. The present Liu Kang shows up and starts to fight Raiden, sure of himself that he can kill Raiden, but fails short and loses. He begs Raiden to kill him, but Raiden then saves him and passes Liu Kang merging into Fire God Liu Kang. Fire God Liu Kang manages to sweep through Kronika's army and defeat her revenants, and the final fight with Kronika begins. The battle can go three ways. One is that Liu Kang loses and Kronika manages to start the new era. Second, Liu Kang defeats Kronika in the prehistoric era and Raiden appears saying he is Earth's protector and he must choose someone to restart the timeline with and he naturally chooses Katana. Last but not least, 
Liu Kang defeats Kronika at the dawn of time and Raiden appears as a mere mortal and wants to help build a new era, setting the stage for more to come at 11, Aftermath. As Liu Kang's activate the hourglass, Sang Shung, Fujin, and Nightwolf appear before them stating that Liu Kang is about to do will do them all. They explain that they were imprisoned by Kronika in the void outside of time and space, watching everything that happened up to this point. They state that without the crown from Kronika, all rings will be destroyed. Shang Tsung wants to plan a mission to retrieve the crown from his island, but Raider does not trust him, naturally. Liu Kang agrees, but goes along with the plan by sending Nightwolf and Fujin to supervise over Sang Shung. The trio are sent back to the valley to where his katana defeats Shao Kahn. The three sneak away and they manage to fight off Beast and the Collector. Since they were seen, they can't risk just by going straight to the island, so they will need help of Sindel. It's perfect since she had no parts during the events of the time quake. They head off to get the Jinsei to heal her body from Quan Chi's influence. They all encounter Frost and Gears and defeat them both, and for good measure they send Gears to the Chaos Realm. They then head to Outworld for Shiva's help. It didn't take much convincing to get Shiva to help them to bring Sindel back. So they head out, but Baraka and Aaron Black get in the way. Jay also tried to stop them, but she is easily defeated. Once they get to the healing chambers, Kodo and Katana tries to stop them, but it's to see and bring Sindel back to life, having somewhat a heartfelt reunion with her daughter. The trio plus Sindel make it to the island and they each split up. Fujin and Shang Tsung go and look for the crown, while Sindel and the Night Wolf deal with Cetrion. Fujin wonders how long until Shang Tsung betrays them. The two make it to the World of Souls and do battle with Jax and New Cybot. Fujin manages to convince Jax to come back to their side. They make it outside and the battle of Cetrion had ended. They succeeded on attaining the crown. Jackie and young Jax show up with special forces agents, but President Jax then brings them up to speed. Shang Tsung and Fujin make it to the Fire Gardens, interrupting the fight between Sub-Zero and Scorpion. They want to talk to Raiden, but they didn't fight due to the fact that they are aligned themselves with Shang Tsung. Raiden shows up with Liu Kang and they are all present to Crown and brought up to speed. Kronika then shows up and freezes everyone in time but Raiden and Shang Tsung and Fujin. She tells them that the Crown was designed by Shang Tsung and warns them that he will inevitably betray them. Kronika tries to erase Shang Tsung and Raiden but Fujin saves them by putting on the Crown and sends her away. In Outworld, Sindel plans to overthrow Katana with the help of Shao Kahn. Shiva overhears this and tries to stop her, but is easily defeated. Sindel then lies and blames Shiva's attack on Katana to her army, and but they then swore allegiance to Sindel. Gear shows up and tries to sway Shao Kahn and Sindel on their side, but they both decline. Angry that Kronika betrayed him, Shao Kahn and Sindel head to the Sea of Blood by taking over the ship manned by Sonya, Pash, Johnny, and Cassie. Katana sees this and goes to find him and convinces her to get the spell lifted, placed on her by Shao Kahn. But Sindel reveals that she was never up under her spell. She wanted to marry Shao Kahn and got rid of Katana's father, Jared, saying that he was weak. They both defeat Liu Kang and Katana. The others were at Kronika's gates and they prepared for battle. Shang Tsung's intentions were revealed and takes the crown from Fujin. Shang Tsung makes it to Kronika's hourglass along with Shao Kahn and Sindel. Shang Tsung portrays them and steals their souls, leaving their bodies dried out. He then defeats Kronika and is about to reshape history until Fire God Liu Kang shows up, knowing Shang Tsung's plans and begins the final confrontation. There are two ways this fight could end. If you choose Shang Tsung, he absorbs Liu Kang and then becomes the ruler of all realms. If you choose Liu Kang, you defeat Shang Tsung and you reshape history and you meet the great Kung Lao to prepare him for the first Mortal Kombat tournament. Man, that was a roller coaster ride. Time mergers, multiple timelines, new timelines, another new timeline from that timeline. Man, time travel makes your head hurt. Now, I know that writers for certain series, books, or movies or whatever use time travel and retcons as a cop out whenever they write themselves into a corner. But in the way, they managed to pull it off. Usually when someone goes back in time, mainly a hero, <coughs> Flash, things don't go according to plan. Kronika is no different. She has to reset the timeline multiple times with the same outcome, 
Liu Kang had raided on different sides. Her plan is to use the hourglass to fall short due to certain factions were after their own selfish goals low key. That's when they either renounce their loyalty to her or change sides altogether. In my humble opinion, Chronicle was better off alone or had a very small circle that she could trust. Her plan could have worked. It was better off that Dark Raiden was erased to give past Raiden the chance to right the wrongs from the previous game. And he did just that. He even gave up his divine power and becomes a human and saves Liu Kang, turning him into the Fire God. Others sought redemption and willing to put in effort to change their destinies. But I wonder what would happen if Kronika did not use the Hourglass in the battle with Liu Kang. Would he have just coexisted and have to live in fear of the past counterparts dying? This scenario alone could cause the space-time continuum to implode on itself. I've seen other videos on Sindel was evil willing was a downplay Sindel's character. From the previous games and on Mortal Kombat Annihilation, she was always up under a spell. But on this take, I understand why. My theory on that is Chronicle restarted the timeline so much to where she probably forgot or no matter how much you try to fix the timeline, things will not be the same. As Jay Gear explained it to Barry Allen on The Flash as he created Flashpoint and tried to go back in time to fix things yet again and was confronted by Jay Garrett. One thing that stood out to me the most from MK11 is that my favorite character since Mortal Kombat came out in the early 90s is that Liu Kang has gotten redemption and good character development. Let's face it, he had gotten done dirty since Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance since Shang Tsung killed him. It continued to Mortal Kombat Armageddon to where he was a freaking zombie. Whoever made that idea needed to be shot. He should have just stayed dead. Anyway, he got he got even did more dirty in Mortal Kombat 9 when he turned tried to kill Raiden, but is accidentally killed. Then comes back as a revenant and rules another realm. He even joins Kronika's side. The past Liu Kang, even though he almost went down the same path as his present counterpart, until he figures out along with Raiden that they have been manipulated by Kronika, he is then saved by Raiden, combining their energies and becoming Fire God Liu Kang. He stood behind the scenes until Shang Tsung defeated Kronika, but I don't know get why he didn't intervene before, but I guess he had to wait in a bigger grand scheme of things. Other than that, Liu Kang deserves that this win after what he's been through the last several games. But what does that mean for the future of Mortal Kombat? Since Liu Kang started the timeline over and meeting the great Kung Lao, will the next game be a pre prequel or would it be the new future or present? Like I said, time travel makes my head hurt. In the end, Mortal Kombat 11 as a whole is the next level in fighting games, and when the next one comes out, we don't know what the outcome may be, but I know for a fact that the time travel stuff will cease. But as always, thank you guys for watching, and see you all next time. Hey there everyone, I want to take this time to let you guys know that I've reached a 300 subscribers milestone. I want to thank you guys for putting up with me and my videos. But I got a long way to go, and I'm going to continue to make good content and share with you guys. Also, I'm doing a contest for a $50 gift card. All you have to do is like, subscribe, comment on what you want me to review in my videos from a TV show, video games, movies, or anime. You'll know the winner when the video will be released. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you guys next time. Bye.